Welcome to the Subtutorial series. In this tutorial, you will learn more about the data structure naming conventions for datasets and variables. You will receive the SEP data in a SIP file. The SIP file has a version number that corresponds to the number of survey waves, that is, the years since the beginning of the survey. Version 34 therefore contains 34 waves of SEP data. As the first wave was in 1984, version 34 contains all data collected up to 2017. The unpacked zip file contains two folders and several datasets. Don't worry about the two folders for now. You can learn about the data in the EU Silk and the RAW folder in another tutorial. The datasets you see in the zip file are the SEP data. In general, we try to give our datasets intuitively understandable names. To help our users navigate their way through all the datasets, the names of datasets are made up of combinations of references to the unit of inquiry, the type and format of the data, and often a reference to the underlying survey instrument. Let's look at each of these options in more detail. SEP data can be distinguished by the survey unit. As the SERP is a household panel study that also provides information on every individual living in the sampled households, some datasets contain information at the individual level, while others contain information at the household level. Datasets containing household level information frequently are indicated by a leading age. Datasets providing information on individuals are frequently, but not always, indicated by a leading P. Next, Datasets can be distinguished by the type of data they contain. There are tracking datasets, original datasets, generated datasets, biographical datasets, and datasets containing survey information. Tracking datasets contain basic information on survey units. We recommend using these datasets to identify the research population. PPATH L contains the entire survey biography of all individuals who have ever lived in a SEP household. HPATH L contains the same information on the household level. The corresponding H and P Brutto datasets contain information on sampled households or individuals who we wanted to interview or re-interview but who did not provide an interview. The probability of exit dataset is a supplement to the P Brutto dataset for individual exits. Original datasets contain unaltered and unprocessed information as provided in the interviews. Generated datasets are datasets that receive particular attention and care from the SEP team. Variables in these datasets have been subject to consistency checks and harmonization to improve data quality. They also contain newly generated variables that are of special importance to the research community. Datasets containing generated variables are generally indicated by the suffix gen. There are generated datasets on the household as well as the individual level. The PEQF dataset is also generated. It contains variables that have been harmonized for international comparisons with a number of panel studies from other countries. Biography datasets are a particular subgroup of generated datasets in which selected information is presented from a biographical perspective. They are indicated by the bio prefix. Some biography datasets are subject to change and are updated when a respondent reports relevant information in the annual interview. Examples include the dataset for respondents' educational or job biographies and childbirth biographies. Some of the biography datasets contain biographical information that is not subject to change, such as information about parental schooling or information collected at a particular age in childhood. All biography datasets are on the individual level. Finally, there are some datasets that contain information on the survey as such. These include sampling information, design weights and exits. Let's have a look at the different data formats in the SEP. In general, we provide data in wide, long and spell format. There are four datasets in wide format. PPATH, PHRF, HPATH and HHRF. These contain unchanging basic information about the respective survey units and only have one row per survey unit. Most of our datasets are in long format. In these datasets, one row corresponds to a person-year combination. Some of the datasets are indicated by an L for long. A few datasets are in spell format. They contain the beginning and end of certain states or spells. 
spell data are indicated by the suffixes Cullen and spell. The marriage and relationship biography datasets BioMars and BioCouple are also in spell format. Finally, many of our dataset names contain references to the underlying server instruments or constructs. For example, the abroad dataset, which contains information from the instrument Your Life Abroad, or the Grip Strength dataset, which contains information from the Grip Strength test. There are also some datasets that contain information on specific survey modules, such as the Cognit dataset, which only contains information from the tests of cognitive potential, or the Trust dataset, which contains information from the Trust module. I recommend watching our tutorial on the instruments currently used in the SEP. I hope that you now feel better equipped to navigate your way through the different datasets. If you want to be sure, you can find a comprehensive list of all datasets and a short description of each of them on the SEP companion under Core Datasets. Let's now take a look at some of the conventions for naming variables. In the long format, all non-generated variables are named according to the following scheme. The first digit is a dataset identifier. P stands for person, H for household, L for biography datasets and J for youth. The second digit tells you the type of variable. L stands for numeric variables and A for alphanumeric variables. The third digit gives information about the broader topic of the variable. An A stands for demography and population and an H stands for attitudes and values and personality, for example. You find the complete list of the topics in the SEP companion. The first three digits are followed by a 4 to 7 digit number. Some variables will additionally carry an underline h or underline v as a suffix. This indicates that the respective variable has been collected in slightly different ways in different years of the survey and that harmonization is required when using it across all the years. The underline v indicates the different versions, while the underline h is the sub's suggestion for harmonization. More detailed information on why harmonization may be necessary can be found on the SEP companion under versioning and harmonization. Variables that do not follow this labeling scheme are generated variables. Generated variables will have intuitively understandable colloquial variable names. If you have the choice between generated and non-generated variables, we always recommend using the refined generated variables. Note that we also have different types of missing variables in the SEP. This allows you to differentiate item non-response from missings that result from filtering or from the fact that a question was not part of the survey in a given year. Don't forget to recode the missings into a format that your statistical analysis software can understand. Thanks for listening.